Well, it's Black History Month, and the woman behind the movement in Canada, Jean Augustine, is in the spotlight tonight. Augustine made history in 1993 as the first African-Canadian woman to be elected to the House of Commons. She soon became a symbol for fighting for social justice. One of her main priorities in office, working on legislation to protect low-income individuals. As we mentioned, Augustine also helped pass a historic motion designating February as Black History Month here in Canada. Here's part of our conversation. And Jean Augustine joins me now in studio. Thank you so much for taking the time. Well, Travis, it's my pleasure to be with you, especially as you starting this new show and this new life. Well, it's, you know, it, it is a new life and it's such an honor to have somebody uh, of your significance here. And I, I want to rewind back to 1995. Yes. In December 1995, when That's you right. stood up in the House of Commons. Yes. Tell me what that moment was like when you were putting a motion forward on Black History Month and Canada recognizing it. Well, I think it's important, Travis, to go a little further. Yeah. And that is that in the House of Commons at the time, we had for the very first time the Bloc Québécois, and we had for the very first time uh, Preston Manning and the Reform Party. The discussion at the time was about uh, free trade. The discussion was about um, ice cream and yogurt and boneless beef and and. <laughs> those uh, those were the issues and here I was coming along asking people to deal with the fact that in our schools we did not teach about indigenous people that we need to recognize the presence of, of African Canadians etc so here was a social issue that people I'm sure didn't want to deal with yeah. and here was the daily back and forth in the house about um, those um, those critical, what was considered to be critical issues. And I know that you said that you had butterflies in your stomach when you stood up waiting for what would happen. Yes. Uh, why were you so nervous? Because, and again, I said that to see me young people the other day, yeah. I didn't have Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. <laughs> I had to meet individuals face to face, eyeball to eyeball and say, I have this motion yeah. asking for Black History Month in Canada and would you support the motion? And I didn't get, in some instances, I didn't get the, a, a form yes. Yeah. And so I didn't know who was going to be in the house at the time when I stood up, and whether some of those people who were negatively inclined would say no to, the, to, um, to my request to declare February Black History Month in Canada. And so I was, I was a little nervous. And I was watching each and every member. When you stand up, you yeah. can see the opposition. And I'm looking at everybody with that school teacher. Uh, look, you know, don't dare say no. <laughs> <laughs> and all these years later, here we are. Uh, what do you think Black History Month and recognizing it in this country has done for the level of awareness there is about the, the, the history that we have, the rich history that we have in this country and, and, and leaders? I think it's important that, uh, that we reflect on uh, the African-Canadian presence. And we talk about um, what we teach in our classrooms, what discussions we hold in our religious um, places, what happens in the entertainment world, mm -hmm. what happens in corporate Canada. The discussion over the years has moved, but it started with the Parliament of Canada saying yes. February is declared as Black History Month and we could look at the history of African Canadians. We could look at the coming um, on the, with uh, Champlain, uh, the, the, the presence 400 years or more ago. And, uh, and the fact that black Canadians have been contributing, have been yeah. very much part of Canadian society, and that it was important for educators to understand that we were not talking or telling, apart from the Underground Railroad. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of discussion in our textbook. Neither were there discussions around treaties and rights and uh, relationship with the Crown and Indigenous people. We, we, that, those were not in our textbooks. So we realized that there was much that we had to, to learn ourselves yeah. and uh, to teach and to make sure that our young people understand 
Canadian society. You know, I was looking at uh, clips of you, the trailer for your documentary last night, and I couldn't help but think about my, my own mother, who, who's also from the Caribbean, uh, you know, uh, Trinidad and Tobago coming to this mm -hmm. country and facing many different challenges, mm -hmm. as you did yourself, yes. and, and jumping those hurdles. Uh, when, when you look at what this generation is facing in terms of diversity and inclusion and some of the challenges around that. How do you think it's different? Well, I think it's different in several ways. It's yeah. the same, yeah. but it's different. Um, it, when I say it's the same, it means that you have to struggle, you have to work hard, you have to get yourself, you have to integrate yourself in Canadian society, you have to contribute, and hard work in the end uh, is, is important. It's different in that um, the social climate has changed. Mm -hmm. The discussion around race, around diversity, around equity, inclusion, those discussions are with us today. And um, those discussions were not there. We were struggling to put those um, discussions around diversity and equity and inclusion um, on the map. In and, the early days. And, and DNI, uh, diversity and inclusion, has come under fire in recent years. Yes. Uh, it, you know, it's really become a fixture, some would say, in the culture wars, yes. especially in the United States. Uh, yes. You know, those are, there are those people that feel that DEI leads to further discrimination, a hyperfixation on race and society in a reductive way. What do you make of that? And, do you share any of those concerns? Well, I think the concern I have is the fact that sometimes we spend too much time on diversity. Mm -hmm. And in the, can in the ca Canadian context, you just have to look around this room, look at your, uh, the crew around yeah, you. It's true. <laughs> or, you know, you walk the streets, you can see diversity. It's reflected in who we are. Um, as, um, at the same time, I think what is important is for us to talk about inclusion Right. How do we make sure that at the managerial level, promotional opportunities, opportunities for young people to, uh, to see themselves reflected in everything in the society and to be there uh, in every aspect of Canadian life? And I think this is really where we are right now. So, so to have a seat at the table at very high levels that's is right. what you're talking that's about. That's right. That's right. And and you know there were there were studies. I was reading something by Catalyst and some other uh, that that have done data uh, collection to to show that we're not in the boardrooms, not yeah. where in in the numbers that we should be. Neither are women, and black women <laughs> even less uh, less so. And so, you know, I, I think it's important for us to keep working on, um, working on this. I think George Floyd's, mm -hmm. the pandemic, mm -hmm. have uh, taught us some lessons and have created some opportunities for us to reflect and for us to understand why it's important. And so those who would pull back and say, well, you don't need this well, you right. know, I mean, you know, let's get back to the past. Let's, we realize that we can't get back to the past, that we now have before us a diverse, a multicultural, multiracial, multiethnic, multireligious society. We have to live together, work together, and build a society because I think that Canada is a work in progress. Does it concern you, uh, the, the U.S. election, and I was talking to um, the former Supreme Court Justice yes. uh, Rosalia Bella about this. She said that she's very concerned uh, mm -hmm. about what could potentially happen mm -hmm. in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, racial divisions yeah. that we could see, uh, you know, bubble to the surface, and even in this country as yes. well. Yes, yes. Well, you know, um, I think it was Pierre Leo Trudeau way back when said, "We're sleeping beside the elephant," mm -hmm. and when the elephant rolls. <laughs> Or as somebody else said, you know, when uh, the United States get a, um, get a cough, we get the cold. Or right. when they get yeah. a cold, we get the cough. Um, so I think it's important what happens there and for us to, to really affirm who we are as Canadians and that we don't roll back some of the gains that we've made. And so the whole issue of, uh, you know, things like critical race theory and, and, uh, and uh, you know, what's in textbooks and, and, uh, and the way in which we handle immigration questions and all of this that we see happening in the U.S. Hopefully, we will not, as Canadians, um, allow those influences 
to come across. But, but, the but do you think those influences already exist in this country? Do, do, are you concerned that you know we may be moving back in some ways? And, and if that is the yes. case, how do you keep pushing forward? Yeah. Well, I, the example that, uh, as, as you were speaking, that came to mind was the fact when I was in the Parliament of Canada, we can argue over um, policy and we can, you know, thumb the desk over policy. But at the end, it was, do you want to go to coffee? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Like everybody kind of came together. Yes, but right? now as I watch, and I'm sure you do too and many others do, it's rancorous. It's personal. It's... Um, it's throwing blame. And so there is, there is an aura that's out there as people try to make political points that it becomes very, very personal. Was there a, a, a point where you saw that kind of discourse change? And I guess what, what, what for you was the genesis of that change, perhaps? Well, I think it changed when, um, when we had more or less uh, when the Reform Party came into the House and they had right. their own, um, you know, they, they had their own policy and policy directions. Right. And, uh, and people began to go back over grounds that we already plowed. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it seemed to be, uh, to have moved, you know, along. And uh, we see a lot of uh, conservative thinking that reflects very much what is... Uh, Republican thinking in the mm. U.S. I, I know you have the, the Jean Augustine Center, uh, and you, yes. you, you go into classrooms often and That's talk right. to young people, especially yes. in February. What do you, you tell them about Black History Month and, and really uh, where their focus needs to be when it comes to re reflecting uh, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. month, and not, not only in February, mm -hmm. but throughout, That's right. That's throughout, right. throughout the year? Yeah. Well, there are two things yeah. I, I, I underscore. Yeah. And one is that black history is Canadian history. Uh -huh. It's black history is not just for black people. Yeah. Black people is black history is Canadian history. I have to know about you. You have to know about me. You have to know my history to understand. Um, and I have to know your history so that we could respectfully uh, work together. And so with, with the young people, um, it's important for them to know that history. It's important for them to know people who have um, who've had breakthroughs, who've done things um, that made not only um, for, the, for pride and for uh, you know, achievements and whatnot, but again, it's ensuring that they, they feel good about themselves because they know they come from a long line of people who've made contributions. Yeah. You, you know, uh, when I think about your incredible life, coming from a small island, becoming a teacher, and then becoming the first female black MP uh, in this country, and, you know, you really made Black History Month a reality here, what do you reflect on on February 1st? I'm grateful for the fact that Canada continues um, to to work at those social justice issues that are important. Uh, the whole conversation around the MAID, the conversation mm -hmm. around um, LGBT, you know, Q, et cetera, all of those conversations that help us as Canadians to be different, to push forward, to recognize the social, those social issues. And um, I jokingly said to someone the other day, um, uh, have you had your kids in the car going somewhere and you tell them where you're going and five minutes into the drive they said, are we there are yet? Are we there yet? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> and so it's, it's, are we there yet? We're not there yet as Canada when we ask that question. It's, it's a work in progress. Uh, we have to work at the respect that we have for each other. And the world is, is um, sometimes a messy place with wars and violence. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and so we are challenged as people to bring out the best that there is in each one of us, to have that empathy for others and to say, look, we're building a society where justice and fairness and equity and equality are really pillars. <laughs>
It's so nice to chat with you. Thank you so much for coming in. Good chatting with you too. And all the best for Black History Month.